we have been proclaiming, actually the last two weeks, uh, we've been proclaiming that God will make a way where there seems to be no way. There are many things in our lives that take place, and, you know, sometimes we uh, we have certain situations that go on, and, and over a period of time it just seems like nothing is happening, and we'll have a tendency to, to take that thought or take that idea, put it on the shelf, and after a while we just don't think of, about it anymore. And uh, I've been thinking about this song we used to sing at our church, God will make a way. Where there seems to be no way, boy, God will make a way. And you know, in Isaiah chapter 43, it says that God is going to do a new thing. He's going to make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. If you need, if you're in the middle of the desert and you need a drink of water, God is going to bring a river right into the desert just for you. Amen? And so we've been looking at, at different things in, in Scripture that help us and encourage us to, to believe that God is going to make a way where it seems like there is no way. You know, just this morning, I had a gal come up to me after the service, and she said, I'm cancer-free! Glory to God, she is free of cancer. And she said, uh, you know, she didn't have insurance when they discovered the cancer. And so she was concerned about finances. She said it was just amazing how the finances came in. And uh, several people had told her that now that she's, uh, you know, gone through this cancer, she would uh, probably never be able to have insurance again. And she looked at me with a big smile, and she said, I'm cancer-free. And she says, I've got insurance. Amen. Praise God. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. So we took a look at different situations in the Bible. We were looking at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know, and, and how uh, they said, O oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, we will not bow down to you. We will not worship you. We are only going to worship our God. Amen. And so, so King Nebuchadnezzar, he, he didn't like that very much. He said, we're gonna, I'm going to throw you into the fiery furnace. They said, you can throw us into the fiery furnace, but if you do, God is going to deliver us. And if you don't throw us in the fiery furnace... We are just here to tell you, O king, we are not going to bow down to you. Well, he, he told the, his guys, he said, now I want you to stoke this fire seven times hotter than it normally is. And he got a couple of big burly guys out of his military to, to grab uh, 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 Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them in the fiery furnace. Well, the Bible says that these big burly guys got close enough to the fire that the fire actually consumed them and burned them up. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, now they're in the fire, and Nebuchadnezzar looks in there and he says, didn't we throw three men into that fire? They said, yes, yes, king, we, we threw three men into that fire. He said, well, I see four men walking around in that fire, and the fourth man looks like the Son of God. Amen. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He makes a way where it seems like there is no way. You remember when the children of Israel, they were finally released out of Egypt, and they got as far as the Red Sea. And they didn't know how they were going to get across. And the Pharaoh now changed his mind, and he sent his army after the uh, Israelites. Uh, and I'm telling you now, it seems like, you know, you ever been between a rock and a hard place? Now, this is it right here. You've got the Red Sea on one side, and you've got an army coming after you on the other side, and they are not happy. This army is not happy. And so now God speaks to Moses and he says, you take that rod that you have and you stretch that rod out over that Red Sea and you watch what I'm about to do. 
and that water started to wall up on both sides. And the Bible says that the children of Israel walked across to the other side on dry ground. Amen? God will make a way where it seems like there is no way. Then we took a look at Daniel in the lion's den and how uh, here again, here we are back here at Nebuchadnezzar again through Daniel in the lion's den because Daniel was not worshiping Nebuchadnezzar. He was worshiping God Almighty. And so he gets thrown into the lion's den and there's a big rock now that's been put in front of the lion's den. He's going to be in there all night long. Nebuchadnezzar comes back the next day and, and, and he speaks to Daniel. He says, oh, Daniel, are you okay? And Daniel said, my God sent an angel last night. And, and that angel closed up the mouths of the lions and he said, I slept like a baby. I'm doing just fine. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And so my question to the nursing home people in these last couple of weeks, and, and the question to you also is this. Is there something in your life, could be physical, could be a family situation, could be finances, that you haven't seen any change? And so perhaps you've forgotten about it, you've placed it on the shelf. But I'm here to tell you, God is going to do a new thing. Amen. He's going to make a way in the wilderness. He's going to uh, bring the rivers into the desert. And so take that back off the shelf and believe God, trust God. He's going to make a way where it seems like there is no way. Our God is the way maker. Amen.